Welcome to our book explosion, Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. I am Jo, I am Christine for the Bananas Books, and I'm here with... I'm Jesse from Jesse the Reader. And I'm Kat from Katie Tastic. Jesse the Reader and Katie Tastic, and today we're going to be discussing Second Chance Summer, and we're going to be discussing it in spoilery glory. And we're also... also pick what book we do in May so if you stay you get to pick with us it's very very exciting and we're going to announce the winner at the end and there's going to be a poll and it's going to be so political and fun so uh, we're going to start off with our uh, you know our, uh, you know what we do you know what are they called thoughts our thoughts initial on the book. thoughts, thoughts on, the book. <laughs> on second chance <laughs> Oh. Yeah, oh, 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 yeah, I know, I made one, I made one, I made one. Hashtag second chance explosion. Check in, second chance explosion. It's in the description. We're right. going to be taking questions from you guys from Twitter using the hashtag second chance explosion. So leave us questions on Twitter and we will find them and answer them. Uh, yes, Jesse, start us off with your thoughts. All right, I'll All start, right. With, I'll start, start with, with my thoughts. thoughts. Okay. My thoughts. okay. Oh, oh, oh. I'm having issues. I'm having issues. Cat, you go first. You, I can hear you, Jesse, but Cat, go ahead, start us. I think, I think, what? Christine, you need to Christine, you need to start. Are you having issues? Oh, I need to restart? What's happening? Everything sounds fine to me. <laughs> I don't know how to restart. There's no button. <laughs> Just refresh. Just refresh. Okay, give me a second. I can't refresh. Like that's what I mean. It's like a no button thing. There's no refresh button. I'll just hit. End. <laughs> okay, I think we're still live. That was so bad. I was yeah. like, I can't hear myself. I, you, you heard it too, right? Like. <laughs> yeah. I was like, is that me? That's why I restarted. Yeah. Um, can I go ahead and share my thoughts? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed this book. This is my first time reading a Morgan Matson book, and I really, really enjoyed it. It was a solid contemporary. On one hand, this book was, like, really warm and fuzzy and nice because it's, like, a summer, like, contemporary. It takes place in the summertime, and we've got this lake house. And um, on the other hand, it was, like, really tragic with, like, everything that was going on with her father. But for the most part, I really enjoyed it. And, yeah, I'm definitely excited to be picking up more books by Morgan Matson. Yeah, I totally agree. This was my first Morgan Matson book as well, and I'm definitely into reading more. And yeah, I loved how it had that balance of, you know, like there's warmth and, you know, this girl on like her own personal journey, like becoming braver and like facing things. And then also we have this really sad story about what's happening with her dad and like we've seen a lot of young adult novels that involve grief but it's rare to see it in this situation where like you find out that someone has like three four months to live and then it, you you're like grieving while they're still around and like trying to come to terms with it and it was really sad. I'm not a big book crier, and the last, like, 50 pages of this book, I was crying, and that does not happen very often with me at all. Okay. Um, before I say my thoughts, I just want to uh, just probably think everyone's spelling second chance explosion wrong, because it's really long and complicated, and just, you can hashtag book explosion. <laughs> and we will find it. <laughs> I mean, there's like three questions, and then there, I have one that's spelled second chance explosion. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is too complicated. <laughs> All the malfunctions today. Okay. Anyway, what was going on with mine before? What Was I echoing or something? I could hear, yeah, there was a huge echo. Like, I could hear myself oh, talking. It was just, nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so, my thoughts on Second Chance Summer, I missed the beginning, this is my millionth Morgan Matson book, um, I read all the other ones, <laughs> and it is, mm, I think it's my least favorite Morgan Matson book, because I love her, because it's really sad, <laughs> 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 and I was, yeah, I was a mess at the end, like, when that letter came out, I was like, <laughs> like, there's always these 
you know, usually this happens in something where the person knows they're going to die. They like, leave the letters. Um, it's happened in, like, I don't want to say, actually. Um, there's another book that I read that did the same thing to me. I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and I was listening to it while I was doing my makeup, and I was just like a mess. I was like, what are you doing your makeup? <laughs> um, but I, I really, I, I did really enjoy it, and I listened to the audiobook, which um, was all told, like, narrated by the same girl, but she did a really good job, like, doing all the voices for everyone and um, making it sound genuine. So, um... It was easy to listen to, and I listened to it, like, all day yesterday while I was doing everything. Um, but, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and it was sad. Um, sad. <laughs> <laughs> but was that the, the part that got you was the letters? That was, like... I, well, I also cried before that. I was getting, like, teary-eyed a lot, but I wasn't, like... I don't think I spilled over. I was trying really hard not to spill yeah. over. <laughs> Yeah, so that finally got me was when um, his father showed up. Was when Grandpa showed up and oh. his son, and like I just I couldn't help it. <laughs> yeah, it was really. It was just there was a lot toward the end. Everything was just like when she was with her sister. That got me too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when she was talking about how, like, her sister just wanted her around, uh, and they, they, they were just, like, going through the same thing together, and it was just, it. <laughs> um, and, uh, like, her little, her speech, her, I knew she was going to get up and do the public speaking at the funeral, and when she did, that got me, too. Yeah. Yeah, and there are so many things that, like, earlier on in the book that didn't, like, make me cry, but that right. were really emotional, like, when she chose to play Casablanca at as like her movie pick for one of the movies on the beach, and just all, all the little things. Yeah. Um, do you guys have a favorite scene in the book? Uh, hmm. Yeah. I liked the scene at the end of the Fourth of July, like after there was the big fireworks show when Henry took her out in the boat and had like their own little private special firework show. I thought that was really cute. Yeah, I, this is one of, like, in this book, um, compared to her other books, it was, like, the least, I feel like I liked the male character. I did not like Henry, but I just feel like he wasn't as compelling as, like, Lucy. I, like, like, I wanted, I would cared more about them making their friendship better than her getting back together with Henry, which was interesting in this book. Um, but I like that scene, too. It was cute. I I really like the scene when she calls um, Lucy over to do the sleepover with the... Oh, with yeah. The, oh yeah, with the girls? That yes, because they were doing it wrong. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you have a favorite part, Jesse? I don't feel like I have, like, a specific, like, favorite part, but there was just, like, so many little moments that I loved. Like, one of the things that I remember is, like, her dad being like, you know I have a window that like overlooks the dock, right? <laughs> he's like, it's okay, like I like this boy or whatever. <laughs> like just so many like little moments throughout the book that I loved. Um, yeah, no, there were a lot of like really nice moments and I think Morgan Messon does that really well. They feel like really genuine. Um, yeah. um I just realized, do we wanna like announce the books that we're having in the poll so people can vote throughout the live show? Yeah, yeah like, do we wanna tweet out the yeah. link too? Okay. okay. Okay, guys, go to Twitter right now, and we are going to be tweeting out a link where you guys can vote for the book of the month um, for next month, and we will be decide or will we, the one that wins tonight will be chosen for the book huh. of the month. For We're going to announce it at the end of the live show. Yeah. In, in, it's like a competition. In 45 minutes, so. <laughs> Wait, do we want to show them what the, what the, um, what the things are? Well, let's say what the options are, the full title and author, because I think the poll is just the title. Okay, so are, do you want me to just announce one or all of the options? You can do all of the options. I can do all of them. Just go for it. Okay, let me pull up the things. I don't want to get the author's names wrong for the one, the other one. Okay, um, so we have um, One Plus One by Jojo Moyes. We have Can You Keep a Secret, which isn't this book. Can You Keep a Secret by Sophie Kinsella. And we have What We Saw by Aaron Hartzler. Hartzler. Aaron Hartzler. Sorry. I don't the name's not on here. <laughs> oh, it's down there. Aaron Hartzler. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so vote for the one that you want to read next month with us, and that will be our next live show. Um, yeah. And the poll results are secret right now, so no one will know which one is winning until Jesse is <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to retweet Jesse's tweet really quick. Okay, let's see. What's under – are people asking questions? <laughs> let's see. Okay. Um, oh, how much did you want a cute little puppy Murphy? Wait, okay. This is what I was thinking. I love that the dog's name is Murphy. Wait, <laughs> is that that's her own dog? dog. Yeah, yeah, her dog's name is Murphy. Like, why does this sound so familiar? Because she always Instagrams pictures of her dog. Yeah, for those of you guys who don't know, Morgan Matson has a dog named Murphy. So. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I was like, I know a dog. Like, it, I could picture it because I was like, I know this dog. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> this book gave me some serious puppy envy. Like, I, while reading, I was just like, I want a dog. Like, wow. Yeah. I really want a puppy. <laughs> I love that they ended up keeping him. <laughs> Maybe yeah, so. uh, I love dogs. I love that the bakery was called Borrowed Time. And, like, you know, because I was listening to it, I heard it, like, Borrowed Time. Like, you know, if your dad is on Borrowed Time, like, that's what I was just, like, thinking. And it wasn't until, like, I opened my book for some shower reading for ten minutes, and I was like, Borrowed Time. Like, <laughs> you know what? Like, the, like, the spice time, and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one thing that I really liked, um, like, not only her dad's puns throughout the book, but oh, also, yeah. like, a lot of the little shops in this town had, like, punny names, like, doggone it and borrow time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those were really great. Um, and... I, I love, I really liked how they went to the diner and they played that question game every day. Like, that kind of got me toward the end, too. Like, because yeah. you really don't know that much, those things about your parents that much, because they don't talk about their past that much. Yeah. It's weird. Like, I don't know anything really about the high school years of my mom and dad. <laughs> like, okay. except for, like, the one or two stories I've heard. Yeah. Um, it's also nice seeing that, though, because, like, at the beginning of the book, they're, like, not the most, like, close family. So, like, towards the end, it's, like, they've progressed into that. And it's just, like, oh, <laughs> makes it even more emotional. <laughs> yeah. Like, it really helped them bond over, like, having this time together. It wasn't just about, like, their dad. It was about them as a whole. Yeah. Um, and I was just going to say something else. Oh, something came Oh, the grandpa. Okay, Christina Nelson asked, what did you think about the grandpa? And I just, I really liked his role in the story. I feel like um, it, it was kind of a getting to know him thing, too. Like, they just haven't spent enough time with him. The way she described yeah. him, like, kind of like a hard ass. But really, yeah. he didn't know him very well. Uh, and he turned out to be really nice. And it was nice to kind of have kind of a father-ish figure there for them in this time, because he was that for everyone, I feel like. Yeah. I don't know, what do you think of him? It was like I got a second chance with him. <laughs> See a different side of him and everything. <laughs> oh my god, can I just comment on... <laughs> so the second chance thing, when she came up to Henry and was like, how do you feel about second chances? And I was like, you're already on your second <laughs> Like, you should ask about a third chance, girl, because you really not your second chance. Yeah, like, Henry was so, like, patient and forgiving about the situation. Like, yeah, at first, you know, he was very standoffish to her, but also, like, you know, we start the book not really knowing what, it, what she did, like, what happened, like, what did she do that was so bad, and, like, the running away part and not clarifying things was bad, but, like, the situation wasn't that messed up. Like, yeah, it totally was, like, really, it felt blown out of proportion to me because they were 12. Like, I just couldn't yeah. <laughs> You were 12. Like, even Lucy, like, you were 12. Like, you were 12. <laughs> that was the still point of anger. You were 12. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I know they were best friends, but if that happened to me, I was like, I would be like, hey, so what happened? Like, I wouldn't be just be like, I'm angry. You were 12! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, not, not only that, but I, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like that's not such a huge deal. Like, when I was in junior high and high school, a lot of 
like some of my friends, we'd have crushes on the same guys. And it was never like a friendship breaker. It was never like like I could say yeah. Yeah, I, I can see how it could be a friend breaker like at that time, because it's like, oh, how dare you? I liked him, and you're with him. But like, if she just said like, oh my god, like I'm just, like I like him too, and we just went on a date, like that's what I was gonna tell you. She would have just fixed everything right there because they're twelve. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but they were twelve. Like I <laughs> even for romance, like it was really cute. But you guys were 12. I think you can get past it. Like, <laughs> and try it. Um, but yeah, that's that's another reason why I like, I feel like I wasn't as attached to the romance because I'm like, I mean, like, it's cute and everything, but I care more about this friendship that, like, broke because of this stupid romance when you were 12. <laughs> like, I don't know. See, you I know? cared more about the Henry relationship. Um, earlier on, like before we met Lucy, like before Lucy right. showed up, when it was like, we were, we kept running into Henry, and I was like, when's the next time, when's the next awkward situation, we're gonna run into Henry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just imagining, like, having this relationship for like three weeks when I was 12, and then like, <laughs> holding on to a grudge about it, like, if I were Henry, I would have tried to get a hold of, uh, her. Yeah, I also, like, did they, did they not keep in contact at all during the year? Like, does Lucy not have her number? Like, they had to have, I mean, they might not have had cell phones if they're, like, our age. Um, but, but still, like, they have telephones. Like, I would have had their home number. Like, you would have yeah. had their home number. Um, like, and they didn't mention, like, dodging calls. So I'm not sure about that. Like, I'm not sure. I just felt like that whole issue was, like, blown up to be the end of the world for everyone. <laughs> and it wasn't. <laughs> Poor Lucy going through that fucking divorce when she was 12. That was sounded brutal. Yeah. Um, you know what else really struck home with me? And I was like, no, you didn't. She was like, oh, I hate oatmeal. It's the worst thing ever. I'm like, people try to dress it up as a dessert. I'm like, oatmeal is delicious. <laughs> So many counts right now. <laughs> Give me that one chocolate chip cookie, and she couldn't say like, "Oh, I actually just throw in some more chocolate chip cookies." Like it was such a dramatic moment. Like she, hates oatmeal. Not, not only that, but like he gave the total out. He was like, "Oatmeal? Are you?" Sure? And she's like, "Yes." <laughs> like I've been like, "Oh, those are oatmeal. Actually, chocolate chip." Like. <laughs> I was just like, so she just like, I feel like she was just kind of like very dramatic, like as like, because she's a teenager, so it makes sense. But, yeah. um, but it's like, girl, just tell him you want some chocolate chips. Then she split that one chocolate chip cookie with her whole family. <laughs> <laughs> All dramatically hate oatmeal cookies. <laughs> Cookies are delicious. <laughs> now we know why this is your least favorite Morgan Mess. <laughs> <laughs> it goes against all my beliefs. <laughs> oh my god. Um, let's see if we have. <laughs> Did you guys laugh at the Jaws part? Because I love that. I thought that was cute. The Jaws. I thought that was funny too. Yeah, and then all, all of his movie picks. Oh yeah, all of his choices were like. <laughs> Why did you choose that? <laughs> um, thoughts on the no the sign name she picked. What sign name? What am I forgetting? At the very, very end, she chose a sign that was like Robin soaring from like, oh. the house. Oh. Oh. I oh. What is it? I, you know what I really liked and brought me tears again? The the pun on his gravestone. Like... Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was like, mm, that's beautiful. Um, thoughts on Wendy and Warren, asks Susie. I loved how their relationship came to be. Like, I loved that yeah. Taylor was like, went up to her and was like, you want to date my brother? Like, want to go on a date with me? <laughs> yeah, I loved how Warren was intentionally spilling things on the dog to take it yeah. through. <laughs> Like, I would have gotten so mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Murphy. <laughs> not put that sauce on my dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. 
I would have like probably asked her out for him earlier on. Yeah. <laughs> like that poor dog. I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, they were really cute, and I like and. The, you know, I didn't like how she pulled, like, a little bit of a new moon because we knew that she was just going to regret it, like, two seconds later. But I understand why she did it. Yeah. yeah. What did you guys think? It, it was, like, much milder than her bailing when they were 12. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's like I'm going through a rough time right now. Like, I right. can't be in a relationship. I don't want to do this to you. But then, like, when she saw, like, her brother and Wendy, like, talking about this, like, when she realized, like, oh, like, Wendy's talking about grief, like, my brother has been talking to her about all these personal things, like, maybe I did the wrong thing, pushing Henry away again. <laughs> yeah. I really liked what um, Lucy said about, you know, you know when people get hurt in gymnastics, when they don't go full out, and they, like, pull abruptly to a stop, and everyone gets hurt, and um, it just was a really nice metaphor, she's like, how does someone else get hurt? She's like, when there's a spotter there or something. <laughs> Just go with it. It makes sense. <laughs> it's a metaphor. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought Lucy was a fun character. I, I wish, uh, I wanted to see that pink bandana on the dock. <laughs> I wanted to see that, like, in their now time. But I guess they did the flashlight thing, and that was cute. Yeah. And now they have cell phones, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's <was> cute. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, if you could, would you want to live in Lake Phoenix for a summer? Asks Mishy Joy. I'd be down. <laughs> I'm not post. <laughs> I see my Wi-Fi. I mean, I'd want to. I was just gonna like I'd like be down to Verona Cove for a summer. Oh uh, yeah, Verona Cove would be nice. A little beach town. <laughs> I feel like that <laughs> sounds a little warmer and less uh, rainy because it's not on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like a cute town. Like it kind of just reminds me of like going down the shore and going to like one of those little towns. Um, so I probably prefer those. Like lakes freak me out because they have snakes. <laughs> Not that the ocean doesn't have lots of stuff. That... I was going to say. Um, <laughs> and I, that's like, not the like ocean might have it worse. Lakes. Like, it's not like every lake has a significant snake population. <laughs> uh, Jenna used to go to a lake for summer camp, and she always used to see snakes in the lake. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, I'm never going swimming in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I don't go, my family has a house on the bay, and there are jellyfish, so we never go in the water anymore. But <laughs> just the idea of snakes. I don't like it. I've um, been stung by a jellyfish before. Yeah. I got, it was on my butt cheek. <laughs> I, got, I got group stung by jellyfish before, and it was horrifying. Yeah, because we were off the island, oh off of the island. My dad parked the boat, and he's like, swim in. Go ahead, swim in. I'm like, I'm not going in the water. Jellyfish. He's like, there are no jellyfish. Me and Olivia got in the water. Literally a million jellyfish. And we're just, like, swimming, and we got, like, halfway there when we were, like, attacked by jellyfish, and we didn't know what to do, swim in or swim out. And we were, like, screaming. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Worst. And, like, my cousins were in there with us, and they were, like, on my back because they were little. Like, oh, my God, jellyfish. I'm, like, I'm, like 12. <laughs> experience. That's like the last time I went in the bay. <laughs> no lake. No oceans. <laughs> well, oceans don't have as much jellyfish because they're not warm enough. I mean, on the East Coast. And even here, they're freezing, so there's no jelly. There's not as many jellyfish. Um, let's see. Favorite scene of all or scene that made you cry the most? We already covered that morning. Yeah, covered that. Okay. Least favorite character, guys. Um, maybe Fred, the fish manager guy. Um, 
I didn't have anyone that I, like, disliked. <laughs> you know who I wish we got to know better? That dumb guy who's the lifeguard. Yeah, Lee, Leland. <laughs> he was just kind of there, but I thought he could be, like, funny, like, to have in their yeah. conversations. It's like, we, we met him at the same time we met um, Lucy and, oh, what's the other guy's name? Yeah, Elliot. Elliot, yeah, so like, I thought that, like, he was going to be part of the group, yeah. like, he was part of the crew, but then yeah. he was, like, just occasionally mentioned. Yeah, even, um, I wish we just saw a little bit of Elliot and Lucy interacting as a couple. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. that would have been fun. Even just, like, the moment when, like, she first approached him and was like, so you like me? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised she, like, didn't know that, because she seems like the type to pick up on that. Yeah, and not only that, but the fact that she had, like, never, ever considered him at all before when we're hearing from um, Taylor that she's, like, very flirty and, like, you know, she she likes talking to guys and, like, there there's a cute guy working with you. Like, you're not, you never, ever considered him at all in any way. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, someone asked, um, Claire asked, what character do you think what you were most like at their age? <laughs> and I'm going to say uh, her little sister. Because <laughs> I definitely was most like her. What was her name? Um, Gelsey. 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 She's like the ballerina that dances around everywhere, but like has a hard time making friends. <laughs> Um, I wasn't, like, snot. I feel like she's a little stuck up sometimes. I wasn't like that. It's more, like, really quiet. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I was a little... Oh, go ahead, Kat. You go, you go. Okay, I feel like I was a lot like Taylor, because, like, I used to run away from my problems. Like, I didn't want to face my problems head on. I would just be like, nope, not dealing with this right now. I'm going to go run away. Um, so, yeah. I didn't run away, but... <laughs> yeah, that's actually exactly what I was going to say. Like, I am yeah. most more like Taylor mm -hmm. in that she is, like, more reserved and, like, her friend is like, I like this guy. And instead of saying, oh, hey, I like him too, she's like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not good with confrontation or public speaking in front of crowds. Like, that's why. <laughs> Same. <laughs> the worst of <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, at that time, I was like, I couldn't even, when I talked in front of crowds, I'd be like, Ugh. even now, I'm kind of like, Ugh. but then Same. I was really, really When we bad. do panels, when we do panels, I'm like, I'll jittery. <laughs> yeah, jittery. <laughs> I can't talk. But I could kind of, I can speak now, but back right. then, I was jittery, and I'd just be like, and the. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at, at, at 12 years old, like, I could not have done a panel, like, in, I don't know. At 12 years old, I could not have, I would not have been able to, like, get a boyfriend. Like, even just, like, at that time, I don't think I could, like, talk to a boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I was like, really? She was 12? She had this big relationship? <laughs> Her first love. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Cray. Cray. Like, I wasn't even, like, brave enough to tell people, like, tell my friend I liked a specific boy. I was just like, <laughs> if they find out, the world comes to an end. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, any songs that would be great for a soundtrack or would represent a certain scene? I don't know. I didn't really think oh, about man. that. I didn't think about that either. Hmm. Um, All I can think of are Hamilton songs. <laughs> are there any Hamilton <laughs> songs that would fit this book? Um, um, oh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking of like her dad's favorite songs and stuff. Yeah. No. Um, I'm not good at that without a lot of thought. Let's go to the next question. Clearly, yeah. <laughs> Um, do you okay? Do you think that Morgan Matson executed Taylor's dad's death well? This is from Savannah, and I think she did really well. What about yeah. you? I just you really felt that strain for all the the time. Yeah, I mean, especially like at the like end of it, like just yeah. little things that happen throughout the story, like they just come all together at the end, you know, and it's just, like, super emotional, and, like, I don't know, I think she did a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Like, building up to that, you know. 
like like personally, I've never experienced a lo a big loss like that, so I can't say if how like it was handled in regards to that. But yeah, I I thought it was handled really well, and I like I had a lot more emotions about it than I thought I would because I'm not a very big like getting emotional when I read and crying kind of reader, and this book really got me. Like I see another question on Twitter that um says, how did the father-daughter aspect of the book make you think about your own family bonds? And, like, this book, like, made me want to text my parents. Like, I, I finished the book, and I was like, Dad, hi, how are you today? I love you. No. Yeah, um, yeah, I was surprised how big of a strain it was for her to tell her dad that he loved, that she loved him. I was just like, just tell him a lot. Like, she just, like, she said it the end and I was like I'm glad she said it but every time she was like she went to say it she couldn't say it and I was like oh but he's your dad like it's fine to say it whenever um, yeah. um, what were you just talking about the grief oh yeah the handling the grief yeah like I haven't lost someone like early on like that and watched them you know like that's it's a whole other experience watching it happen and knowing there's nothing you can do about it and um, yeah, it was just really, really sad. Like, every time they went out and her dad couldn't drive home, when you could see, like, how frustrating it was for him. And, you know, like, I've seen stuff like that, like, with your grand my grandparents, like, you know, as they get older, it's, like, frustrating when they can't do certain things. But, like, I have never had that happen to someone who was, like, not supposed to be experiencing that because they were so young. And, like, yeah. like that's, that's why it hit me so hard when um, the, the grandfather showed up and it's, like, here is this father with his child who is going through this terrible thing like oh god <laughs> um, but I, I really liked the metaphor it was like really early in the book like the first or second chapter where she said that it's like people are apologizing for her house burning down when there's just like some embers nearby um, like the house is still standing and there's just like yeah. Some burning embers and people are already apologizing and like acting like your house burned down and I was like wow that's like I've, I've never imagined being in that situation I mean, it's just it's really scary you can see it like I, I you can imagine it so easily and like I found myself like you know drip putting myself in that place a lot and I it was just like I don't even want it you know I don't want to even imagine that because I can't imagine the pain that she's experienced like every single day yeah. um, I mean do you guys think it would be better or worse, like if it's if it's sudden and it happens all at once. There's like a, a car accident or something, or you know you find out you have three months. You're on a timer and you have to like. I feel like both ways have like pros and cons, and then and the pros are not like pros, but the pros are like you get to say goodbye. You know, yeah, I mean, exactly. But, but, like, watching that person, like, I know she's talked about how, like, she had a hard time just remembering him the way he used to be. And, like, that's a big, you know, downer that I know the person who's going through it doesn't want them to remember them in this, like, sick state. Um, like, I read a book. I don't want to say what book it was. If you guys read it, you probably know. But, like, there's a book where, um, like, the person is going to go through this and they just decide they don't want to. And so they kill themselves, and it's just upsetting. Yeah. Um. <sighs> That's rough, man. This book was sad and rough. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's very depressing. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we could have more chapters after the ending, what do you guys think would happen? Hmm. Um, hmm. I don't know that I would, I would want more chapters. Yeah, honestly. I mean, like, the whole story. Yeah. And especially by the time we get to the end of it, like, I care a little bit about her relationship with Henry, and, like, they're gonna, he's gonna stay there, and she's gonna go back, and, like, they're gonna try to make it work in that way. Um, like, that whole thing is not very tidy, but by the time we get to that point, the book is not about that at all. Um, like there's there's a lot more going on than her relationship with Henry. Yeah. Um. Let's see. How would you, hmm, nah. oh oh when Kelsey was talking about first base and they're like, what's first base? <laughs> that was <funny. laughs> 
Um, yeah, which was like, yeah, with lots of guys. <laughs> Just like making out with lots of guys. <laughs> Great dad. Excuse me? <laughs> Say what? Yeah, Taylor's like horrified. <laughs> She's like, you're 12! You're making out with all these guys! I'm talking about the first date! <laughs> Yeah, you have the holding hands. That was really cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Did you catch the Amy and Roger Easter egg in there? Okay. Um, no, because no, I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I feel like I did, but I don't want to... Is it... Wait. Okay. The screenwriter parents is something that's in one of the other books, and I cannot... I don't remember which book it was in, and it's bothering the crap out of me. I feel like it has to be since you've been gone, because I know... In, I feel like Maureen would know this. Yeah, Maureen definitely. <laughs> Tell me what's up with those parents. <laughs> like, is this is this Easter egg a big spoiler? I don't think yeah, so. I feel like it wouldn't. It's probably just like a, something that connects the books, kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's just a little thing that you would just. I didn't like since I was not reading it with my eyes. I was reading it with my ears. I, you know, I, I feel like it was easier to miss stuff like that. Let's see. What was your favorite Warren fact? Oh my gosh, Warren taught me so many things in this book. <laughs> like, what was the um the hobo being short for homeward bound? Oh, world. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that, was, Mind that was probably one of the most interesting ones for me because like I knew that Coca Cola had been invented when they were trying to make something else. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't remember what it was. That's how so many things have been invented. Like, people are trying to make other stuff, and they accidentally make something. Yeah. Just, and they're like, oh, what do you know? Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that that's how a lot of things are invented, but it, I just, like, aren't aware of which things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I can't okay. remember. I have what? the Amy and Rogers Easter egg. Okay. Uh, Maureen says... It's buying ice cream. When her and her dad are buying ice cream at the beginning... Oh, she's still typing. <laughs> it's coming. It's what coming. They're in line, she says. <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> or mentioned. Come on, Maureen, is that all? Wait, wait it's buying ice cream. Buying ice cream. That's all she has to say. I don't get it. Wait, were they? You're the they only were, one that's read it. They Christine. weren't there. Where did they hit this ice cream place? I don't Wait. Oh, maybe it's the place where they hit ice cream. But they, I thought they hit ice cream like. She's still typing. She's sending me stuff. Hang on. Her and Roger when are both in line. Amy and oh wait. How did Amy know that? Are in line? And also, <laughs> what she wrote this before Amy and Roger. Oh. I mean, it makes sense if their timelines are different. Her and Roger are both in line. Ice cream in Stanwich? I'm so confused. I have no idea. Okay, so I'm assuming that this is when her and Roger get ice cream, and that's where it's overlapping, because they get ice cream, too. But Maybe. when they get ice cream, I guess they were close to home when they got ice cream. I don't remember, because they're, like, going across the country, so they're, like, coming this way. Right. So I don't know. Anyway. Also, shout out, shout out to Maureen. She's doing Month of Matson next month. Yeah. So if you want to read more Morgan Matson books, go you know. join her. Go follow Maureen Kiwi. <laughs> M-A-U-R-E-E-N-K-E-A-V-Y. <laughs> yeah. That's how you spell Maureen Kiwi. <laughs> I'm not finding this. What, was it when she was getting ice cream um, and she ran into Henry and it was like melting yeah. There's a lot of ice cream moments. <laughs> okay, she says this is a year later than them on the road trip. Mm. I, I'm so confused with what more. Okay, so I guess Indiana Winter was her first novel then. <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay. Not knowing. She says so she's gonna send me a picture of what she's talking about. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like so confused with her text right now. <laughs> you know what's interesting? Um, this is completely different. But um, going back to Henry, his mom. I thought we were maybe going to see her again, and um, we didn't. Yeah. But that was kind of like a big bomb. That is like a completely separate story, and we didn't get to see that arc go on. Yeah. Right. But like I couldn't believe I, I thought at first when he was like so he seemed so affected by the dog being left behind that it was about 
Taylor leaving him behind. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's kind of an extreme reaction. And then we find out what actually happened, and I'm like, oh, we're 12! (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, no, I thought, when he had that big reaction, I thought maybe he had, like, had a relationship with someone who was in that family living next door (laughs) who had the dog. And I was like, did he have something going on with someone? (laughs) Um, Let's see. I'm trying to find some more questions. Guys, we're taking questions in the hashtag Booksplosion. Or oh, don't you... forget to go vote for the book of the month. Oh, next yeah, month. We're, we're next month. We'll be announcing in like 10, 15 minutes. So. Yep, yep. Jesse, do we have a clear winner yet? You're the only one who can see the results. There are two books that are like, like hitting it off in this competition. Oh. Um, no, head, head to head, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, um, okay, the ketchup issue. Warren's ketchup issue, I totally related to that issue. <laughs> I was like, my Nana always has the off-brand ketchup, and it's not the same as Heinz. I forget how he said ketchup was invented in, like, the 17th century in France or something. Yeah, something seven. Yeah, seventeen hundred France, something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. How uh, did you have a summer job like Taylor? What have your guys' experiences been with with summer jobs? Asks Susie. Um, I've never had a summer job. I've just had regular jobs <laughs> that yeah. happen during the summer, but they also happen during the rest of the year. What about you, Jessif? Same. I just I've had the same job since I was seventeen. So. <laughs> oh really? I didn't know that. That you've only yeah. this one wow. job the whole time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. I also, guys, I found it. Yeah. What is, um, what is it? What's happening? What do you point? want the Easter egg? It's on page twelve. Oh my God! Is that early? Is that when they Somebody got just wanted to read it out loud. Oh, I see it. Okay. Okay. We're start dad... reading from I smiled at that. Where where is I smiled at? Oh, I smiled at that. And when we arrived, followed by followed my dad into sandwich jelly. As the jelly was packed, I hung back and let him order. As my eyes roamed over the shop, I noticed Amy Curry standing toward the front of the line, holding hands with a tall, cute guy wearing a Colorado college t shirt. I didn't know her well. She'd moved with her mother and brother. Wow, I completely missed this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I completely missed this too. But she smiled. I didn't really read that book, so it wouldn't have like made a connection to me. But right. I, I feel like if I read it, read it, I would have definitely picked up on that. But I was just probably missed it. It probably was one of those moments where I like moved around while I was listening and didn't right. catch. Um, the summer job thing. I never had, Sorry. like, a weird summer job. I, like, worked for my dad for the first time during summer, though. And I remember it was the summer that Harry Potter, the seventh one, came out. And, like, I was filing. Like, that was my main job, filing. And, like, I'd have the book out on, open to the page I was on, on top of the file. And i like, put a file away. And then I'd read a page of Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows. <laughs> I was reading, I just remember reading the final chapter, like the reunion, um, not the reunion, but like the 30 years in the future, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> like, trying not to cry. Oh. <laughs> um, and like, one of the ladies who worked there was like, Christine, I, you're, I know you're really into the, but finish the book. <laughs> and then you can come back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, perks of being the boss's daughter. <laughs> um, yeah. But, let's see. Okay, we have about maybe time for like four more questions, guys. If you want to tweet in your questions to hashtag book explosion. Let's see. Thoughts on Warren's fear of dogs? <laughs> I'm glad you got over it. <laughs> yeah, same. And I was like, we're keeping that dog, so. Yes. I feel like that happens with a lot of people. Like, once you 
have a dog, you completely change around all dogs. Um, yeah. But I know when I first got my dog, I was a little scared of it because like I didn't understand it. You know, like when it get, when it like yells at you, when it barks at you, you kind of like. Oh, I, my dad always makes fun of me because he found me like on top of the couch one time when I was alone with Chandler, and Chandler was like a baby little barking <laughs> at me, but I was like afraid. <laughs> It's like our first week with him, and I was like, "Why is he barking at me?" <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but now like all dogs, I feel more relaxed around because I feel I like love dogs. yeah, dogs I feel like I'm in, tune, I'm in tune with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you? You guys are. You guys are dog people, cat people, dog people. Dog people, one hundred percent. Ob's dog people. <laughs> <laughs> So many people are cat people, and I'm like, no, I'm surprised by how many people like cats. And like, I, I, my family, my mom and my sister are allergic to cats, so like, we never even like could think of having one. But I mean, cats, I'm okay with cats, but I just prefer dogs. Like, dogs are just so loving and like lovable. I feel like some, cats are like so like on edge all the time. Yeah, and some people like love have loving, cuddly cats, but like yeah. at the same time. You not that's not like the broad scope for cats. Like not the right. majority of cats aren't like that. Like my uncle had one that just like always was just gone. You know, like it'll come in the house when it needs food. <laughs> like we had a stray cat get in our get in our house once, and so like I picked it up to take it outside, and it just clawed my face. Oh my freaked god! Me out. <laughs> yeah, like scarred for life. One of my friends out here had a cat, and like I don't think I might be getting allergic to cats because now every time I'm around them, my eyes get itchy. But, like, it just, like, jumps up on you when you least expect it. You don't even see it coming. And, like, it just landed on my lap. And I was like, ah! <laughs> What is it doing here? I did not welcome it. It's just here. <laughs> and that's the thing with cats, too. Like, when you try to, like, call them to you when you want them, they stay away, and then, like, they'll just, like, you'll be on the computer working, and they'll, like, flop down right in front of it. Like, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, oh, I used to babysit a family who had a cat, and, like, I, you know, like, you're there all alone in the dark, and it's late, and, like, their fucking cat used to scare the crap out of me. He used to jump up next to me while I was watching TV and, like, brush up against me, and I'd be, like, so uncomfortable. Like, get off. Get off. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, are just like they just come when they're not welcome. <laughs> um, oh, here's a good question from Mishi Joy. Uh, what would the sign of your summer house say? What would you name your summer house? <laughs> My summer house is called the Riccio Shore House. <laughs> <laughs> we have a sign that says that inside. <laughs> What about you guys? Um, I don't know. House of the Dog Lover. I'll <laughs> find <laughs> <laughs> like Chateau of Coffee. <laughs> At least have nothing to do with the shore. <laughs> it doesn't have to do with the shore. <laughs> Not many snakes here. <laughs> Snakes not welcome. Snakes <laughs> are snakes. Snake. Um, Tessa's angel says, going back to oatmeal. How do you have chocolate strawberry oatmeal? It's really good. I am very specific about I don't really like strawberries in my stuff or chocolate. <laughs> I like my oatmeal with bananas, and that's it. Or a dollop of, like, some honey uh, yogurt in there with the bananas and the oats. Interesting. Maple sugar, maple sugar oats. Yeah. Well, you guys. I like the chocolate chips with my oats and bananas. I like chocolate chips and bananas together with oats. I'm, I'm not a big fruit in my oatmeal person. Like, I don't hate it, but... I'd rather have, like, the oatmeal separate than a banana separate. <laughs> what flavor of oatmeal, though? Like, just plain oatmeal? I like maple and brown sugar oatmeal. Okay. Um, or, like, just putting, like, some cinnamon and sugar in plain oatmeal. Mm -hmm. or 
I'm like, oh, I'm not a fan of oatmeal. I'm not. I'm not as upset about um, Taylor's oatmeal comments, but. <laughs> I, I feel like it was like an attack on me. I was like, hey, dude, this is not cool. Who talks about oatmeal in a hating way? Um, but um, what was I going to say? Yeah, maple brown sugar is like the best type of oat now. The plain is just like, tastes like nothing. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I'm trying to see if there's any questions we haven't really hit on, because a lot of them. What do you think of Taylor's relationship with her siblings? I like how her, like her and her brother, her brother, kind of really bonded over the summer. And her and her sister, like the whole yeah. um, sleepover slumber party thing, and like also her sister getting like her first best friend, like because she'd yeah. all been like very distant, and they bonded over being like. Ugh. Whatever, like oh, it totally sucks here. Yeah, <laughs> like seconds later, they're like, "Wanna go outside?" Okay. <laughs> um, like I'm. Is no one commenting about the like the screenwriter thing? Like, what is the screenwriter thing? I know that I just, there's a book. Yeah. I haven't read her other books, so I don't know like what the connection would be. Did did um, Maureen say anything about that? No. Maureen, if you're watching still, let us know. <laughs> yeah, what's there any connection? Couple, because like even I felt like they were much more developed than just your typical side characters. Like they got more page time than Leland. Who? Leland, our lifeguard friend. Oh, you mean the side character. Oh, you mean the screen readers. Okay, so I got distracted. I'm trying to look at the comments along the side of the video, and there's just too many to be able to read. <laughs> and they're talking about, like, random stuff, like houses, like Harry Potter houses. <laughs> Guys! <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we should take one more question and then do the announcement. Okay. Okay, see so if you guys can find a good question. Guys, we're taking one more question. Explosion. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Who from the book would you marry Kiss Cliff? Hmm. Hmm. Probably. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, like, I feel like I have to see them in person and get to know them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's not really that kind of book, I feel like. Like, there's so much... Like, you concentrate yeah. mostly on our main character and not that much on the boys and side characters. Um, even, like, I feel like I guess if I had to pick, I don't know, Henry or her brother would be the Mary one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maureen is saying there's lots of Easter eggs in The Unexpected Everything, so you need to read all her books before you read that one. Just throwing that out there. You really don't. You don't need to get the Easter eggs, but I will catch them. <laughs> but it's fun if you do like read all our yeah, books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's little things like um, I don't want to accidentally spoil Lady Midnight. <laughs> I was gonna say, out like in the in the opening in the prologue of Lady Midnight, we see some characters wandering around that you would recognize if you know who they were, but otherwise they're just like. Random characters in the market. Yeah, I mean, those books are more important, though, because they're, like, essential to the plot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, with this, it's just kind of like, oh, look at that, that's fun. Yeah, I, I like it, and I like how it adds, like, you know, all, all these books are in the show. Okay, Emily's parents from Since You've Been Gone wrote scripts. They did. That's what I thought. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but they aren't these same people. I don't know. How could it not be these same people? That makes no sense. What if she she must have a sister named Nora? I don't remember that, but she must. She was an only child. Emily was an only child, not just Sloane? No, I haven't read that book. It's not like Nora or, or... Yeah, Nora, is that her name? Was an only child? Was she definitely? Yeah, okay, Maureen's saying the TV show screenwriters are on it are the ones definitely mentioned in Since You've Been Gone. Wait, I'm confused. She's confusing me. Okay, so maybe they're friends with the screenwriter. I feel like they write plays in here. Maybe. 
not screen, not screen, not screen. She it's says the TV show is mentioned in passing. Okay. Uh, the, the, like the one. The psychic vet detective. <laughs> yeah. The vet detective. I didn't know she was going to be psychic. Like, I was reading the title at the end about their pilot, and it's like, not just a vet detective, the psychic vet detective. <laughs> Okay, if you guys could steal, you had to. So if you, this is our last question. If you had to steal one of these characters' lives and what life swap with them, who would you switch with? I guess I'd probably switch with Lucy. Yeah, same. What was the question? If you had to swap lives with one of these characters in the book, who would you swap with? Like, a lot of them got some hard shit going on. I'd pick Lucy. Yeah. I could be Elliot. <laughs> I'll switch with Elliot. <laughs> no, we don't know that much about Elliot, though, so... <laughs> Elliot seems like a cool guy, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Let's announce our book of the month for May. What is it? See, yeah, the, problem, the, problem, the problem here is, is that they're tied. No! Exactly? So, yeah, exactly. There, there's two books that are at fi both at 56 votes. So. Okay, guys, if you haven't voted yet, go no, vote. We, we've we've we'll link. We'll give you another, we'll give you the, the next one to get a vote, should we do? Or? Yeah, just refresh it. Yeah, okay. Well, that's refreshing. Refreshing. Until there's a not there's a winner. <laughs> what is it? Oh, 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 oh. It's what we saw by Aaron Hartzler. Really? I, yeah, I know. It surprised me. I'll show you I can screen share if I wait, how do you I screen share? Make the results, you can just make the results public, maybe. Do you see that? Oh shit. Yeah, it was so close with oh any God, people's secret. So <laughs> like, this whole time. <laughs> Saying another sadder book. <laughs> yeah, another hard book. <laughs> All right. I'm I never have really fast. That was, that was a fun way to choose the book. <laughs> yeah, like, it came down to the nitty-gritty. Yeah. Um, oh, of the Morgan Matson books... Um, you've read, how does it rank? Um, I rank, since you've been gone, Epic Detour, Second Chance. I rank Second Chance. <laughs> <laughs> the only one Same, I Same, Kat. <laughs> since you've been gone is my favorite. I love that book so much. I want to read both of those, because I, I really enjoyed this one, and this is the saddest one, right? Yeah. You see, the other ones are happier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, oh, like, Epic Detour, it has a lot of emotional baggage stuff going on, but it's not, like, happening before your eyes. It's, like, it's like, it's like going through the aftermath instead of, like, going through the death, um, which is not as sad to read about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, definitely the saddest one of all the ones I've read. <laughs> Um, okay. You've read all of them except her new one because it's new. Yeah, or just came out. I just, yeah, I just got it. I'll read it soon. But, um, the new one looks like so dogs. I love dogs. <laughs> Did you guys see that, like, with a pre order campaign, you get a t shirt if you pre order the unexpected everything? No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maureen was what, telling me about it. What kind of t shirt? I don't know. She just told me that you get, like, a t-shirt if you pre-order it and, like, send in your receipt to something. Okay, well, that is the end <laughs> Second Chance Summer Live Show. Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for voting in our poll. We'll be reading What We Saw. Wait, What We Saw, right? Yeah, yeah. What We Saw by Aaron Hartzler next month. And we'll see you at our next live show. Woo! 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 I'm Jesse. I'm Kat. And we're Bugs Potion. We'll see you next time. Bye!